A new study is raising flags about the continuing rise in antibiotic resistance. A medical journal looked at antibiotic use from the year 2000 to 2015. It found a 39 percent increase globally. The study warned this growth could make it harder to treat many infections. The journal says the rise in antibiotic use is found mostly in lower and middle income countries. CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook joins me now to discuss the report. John, welcome. So why is this increase in antibiotic usage so significant? Well, it's good, it's good news, bad news, right? Mm -hmm. So antibiotics are necessary f for treating a lot of infections, and in developing countries, low-income countries, they haven't had enough antibiotics, and you have people dying of, especially babies dying of, of diarrhea, uh, grown-ups, adults dying of infections that could be treated. So it's good in, in that sense. What's bad is the more you use antibiotics, the more you get antibiotic resistance. And we're finding this now in, uh, in countries like the United States, where antibiotic resistance is so serious that infections like urinary tract infections, skin infections, things that you know 30 years ago you would just give antibiotics and they would get rid of them, now we're finding out the antibiotics we have don't work. So do we know, first of all, why more people in lower and middle income countries are now using antibiotics? I think it is a matter of the world getting smaller, you mm -hmm. know, you, and, and you have organizations that are reaching out and helping to spread uh, medications and along with health care to these countries. So it's kind of a natural uh, progress, uh, progression of the fact that we live in a smaller world. And, and so that's a, that's a good thing. But we've had for years uh, this struggle just educating doctors in the United States to not overprescribe antibiotics, and it's the same thing with educating patients. So typically in the United States, for example, you get a cold. Mm -hmm. Say, oh, I can't stand this. I can't have a cold. Doc, can you give me a z pack Can you give me some antibiotics? And a lot of people cave because you just say, oh, I just want to give something, you something. you got right. to give you something. But the truth of the matter is it doesn't help because viruses, which is what cause uh, colds, are not treatable by antibiotics. Well, now you're going to have this relived now in developing countries, in, in the lower income countries. You're going to have those same, initially this, wow, we have antibiotics, let's go, 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 go. And then, of course, as a second wave, you get the antibiotic resistance. And hopefully we can try to teach them lessons here, it's hard to do, you know, things that we've painfully experienced, we try to get that word out into the rest of the world before they have to suffer it themselves. Because what's the fear long term when you talk about antibiotic resistance, say five years from now, ten years from now, some of those things that you're talking about that in the past would have been knocked out, no problem, that are not now being responsive yeah. to some of these antibiotics? Yeah, the fear is that you're actually left empty-handed. Now, companies are, are and researchers are rushing and working around the clock to try to come up with new ways of, of treating these bugs. But uh, I have had a patient who had a skin infection a couple of years ago who we did a culture and you get the sensitivities and a list of all the antibiotics. Is it sensitive to that? Is it sensitive to that? And one after the other, after the other, after the other was resistant because of antibiotic resistance. And then finally there was one that it was sensitive to. It was a kind of MRSA, which is you know the methicillin right. resistant Staph aureus. That, that can kill you. Right. So it's great that we are exporting antibi antibiotics on one sense. On the other hand, you know, we tend to export other things uh, to developing countries like obesity, like right. bad food, right. like right. sugar. Right. Uh, and hopefully we can do this with a little bit more wisdom so that we're not exporting uh, something that's going to cause the same problems out there that it's been causing here. So is that the bottom line then? I mean, I imagine it's this difficult thing for physicians as you're looking to treat and you know that there is always going to be the potential for resistance out there. But yeah. at the same time, you're maybe being given a patient who is desperate, like you said, for some kind of medication. Yeah, and that's why you have to use it judiciously. You want to save it for the time when you really need it. And the whole other part of this we haven't talked about is that about two thirds of the antibiotic use in the world, uh, in the United States, is in farming. Two thirds yeah. in so, farming. You know, do you know why antibiotics are used uh, in farming? Why? It's not because the, uh, it makes the sheep bigger and the cows sure. bigger. You know, It's not because they're sick. It's because it was found years ago that giving them antibiotics makes them grow bigger. Interesting. And so it's done for that reason. And that has led to antibiotic resistance there. The way that bugs become resistant to antibiotics is this way. Let's say you have a, a, a throat infection. Mm -hmm. You take an antibiotic. And let's say, for argument's sake, there are 100 bugs. And you take an antibiotic, and it kills 99 of them. One of them, though, one of them happens to have a mutation, by luck, 
that makes it resistant. So those 99 are dead, not competing for the food anymore in the back of your throat, and that one becomes 100. Now all 100 mm. are resistant to the antibiotic you're using. And that's why it's so important. If you're given antibiotics, take the full course mm -hmm. for people at home because you don't want to, you want to, kill the whole thing. You don't mm -hmm. want to let your foot up at the last second when, and give it some life because what may come back to life are resistant bugs. All right. Still so many open questions. Dr. John LaPook, thank you so much. Always John. nice to talk with you.